In this video, we're going, to, we're going to be creating an API using the .NET CLI. What we'll do is we'll create the API, and then we'll go and we'll test it in Postman to make sure our API is working. The tool I'll be using in this video is Postman, and I'll have a link down in the description if you don't already have that. That's a really good tool for testing APIs. And then also, I'll have a link down in the description for downloading .NET if you don't already have that uh, installed. Now, how to check to make sure you have that installed, you just go into your command line, and then run .NET, like a uh, version, and then you should get back a version number. Now, if you're getting something like it doesn't recognize .NET, then you'll need to install that. And I have that in the browser here, and it's right here. So you just download it. It's pretty self-explanatory how, how to set this up. When you have this downloaded, then when you run in the command line .NET, it should uh, give you back the version number. And then here I have Postman. This is you just click on this, it's self-explanatory how to download it, and we'll, we'll be using this pretty soon. Now let's go back to our command line, and they give you a whole bunch of different boilerplate projects you can create, and one's called Angler, and I'm not gonna be using that in this video, but let's go and run .NET, .NET new, and then that should give us back a list. Now never mind these right here, I added these later, but up here we have different projects you can create. You could create a web project. You can also create an Angular project. And we'll go ahead and create this. We're gonna delete this in a second, but let's get create this right now. I just wanna show you uh, what they give you. And what we're gonna be creating though is a web API, but let's start off with the Angular. So I'm gonna clear this CLS, then .NET new Angular. And I forgot to give it a name. name and then I'll just call it test since we're going to be deleting it. Okay, created as a new project. And then if we go in here and then hit refresh, sometimes it doesn't show up. And then open up uh, the project. Now, what they give us here is the Angular application within the client app. And I personally like to uh, have this folder outside of the application or the API section. I kind of like to break it out in pieces. What we'll do is we'll create a API folder and then we'll create our spa or the Angular application outside of the API. Let's go and delete this and get rid of this while wow, that is loud. And let's clear this and let's create a API instead. So CLS, then .NET, new, I'm just going to hit enter again and so it gives us a list and then what I'm after is this, the core web API. And that is web API. So .NET, new, and then it's going to be web API. And then the name will be um, ci.api. Now I personally like to keep this name uh, real short. I learned this the hard way. I, I once created an application, I named it, it was like my cool, awesome website. And it was a real long you know, sentence almost. And every time you're jumping around all these different folders, you would have to type that out and it was exhausting. So now I keep it real short and simple, ci.api, then hit enter. And then that gives us this folder and then here is where we're going to put all our APIs and uh, this is looking really good. Now we need to go and test this, make sure this is working. Go into your app settings before we do that or the launch settings actually and I'll minimize this, minimize this. And for now what I'm going to do is re remove this. This is our server and I don't want to be testing on this, I want to test on the 5000. So you just get rid of this. So now when we do our testing, we'll just enter in this. And I could actually just copy this, save it. Now we could run our application and test it in Postman. Open up your command line again, and we'll just clear everything. Now we need to go and navigate into that new folder we just created, and then ci.api. And then we'll just run .NET run. You could also do .NET watch run. And uh, when you do basic changes and save, it'll automatically update. Let's go ahead and just run that. 
All right, now let's go open up Postman and see if our APIs are working. Now the APIs we, we want to check out are in here. And we have a values controller. And then we'll just check this API, make sure this API is working. So paste in here, and then the API is gonna look something like this. We're gonna test in Postman. Like that. And I'll say yes. Copy this. And then we'll go into Postman and test this API, make sure our application is working before we move on to the next thing. Here in Postman, I'm really liking this tool more and more every time I use it. Here they have where you can add collections. What I like to do is create a collection and just keep all my APIs within this collection. I'm gonna call it the same name as our app, so clock it app, that'd be good. And then I won't give it a description or anything. And then now we can just go and click on our API every time we want to open it instead of typing it in every time. Let's add another folder in here. This would be for our values controller. Now the values controller is just for testing. We're going to be deleting it in like several videos anyways. And then create that. And now we could keep all our values uh, APIs in there. Let's go and add a API. And I'm just going to paste that in here and then hit send. We should get a list of values back and that API is working good. So our application is up and running and it's working fine. Now, uh, while we're here, let's go and save this to that new folder we created and click on the values controller. Then every time we wanna test our values controller, we just go into this folder and we'll have all our APIs. I'm gonna go and enter the second API and here you can just like enter like any number. It doesn't really matter. You get back the same thing and hit send and we get back a that and that's working and let's go and save this and i'll put it within the same folder okay great now in the next video what we're going to do is just check out some of the extensions that we can pull into visual studio code and we'll be doing that in the next video so i'll see you then